This podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Listen to other great tech podcasts at www.techpodcasts.com. This is Tech Web. Computers. Gadgets. And other geeky stuff. It's awesome. And it's from the future. Follow us at twitter.com slash techwebcast. And on Facebook. And check techwebcast.info for info. Tech Webcast. Turn on. Tune in. Drop on. Welcome to episode 225 of the Tech Webcast podcast, recorded on the 9th of February, 2013. Tech Webcast is recorded every Saturday and rebroadcast on Aussie Tuckheads on Thursday nights at 7 p.m. Tonight's guest is Patrick Jordan from iPad Insight. Joining Patrick are your hosts, Andrew, Jody, Steve, Brad, and myself, Billy. And also, Casey is filling in for Steve from Chatterbox Live. That is Steve, uh, the new Steve, um, on Justin TV. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome aboard, Casey. Sorry, I didn't realize that. Welcome, Casey. Um, sorry, Billy, that, but that Billy. Um, I should have let you know. That was my fault. Um, but yeah, welcome. Hello, Billy. Welcome, mate. Hello. How's your week been, buddy, mate? This week has been a crazy but exciting week. What's been happening? So I started a new contract with a local web firm, so uh, getting lots of projects there and just cranking out the work. Good one. Good one. And uh, also, I'm selling ad space on Tech Webcast, five bucks a month. And uh, we've we, we got two ads on there so far, uh, Pageant Live and uh, Venturative.com. Chat with them two people. Uh, Casey, hello. Welcome. Hey, how are you doing? I'm going pretty well, mate. Thanks for doing the uh, video today. That's no pretty problem. damn good of you. Uh, Andrew, what's up? How are you there, Brad? Yeah, I'm doing okay, buddy. Doing okay. How's your week been, mate? Really, really busy. Crazy week, actually. Um, there's been a lot of... You know, a lot happening. So, um, nah, the mention the pancake uh, lunch we had. Yeah, we did. We caught up for lunch earlier this week down at the pancake parlor, which was really cool. And we, we recorded a um, SoundCloud interview too, which was a bit of fun. So, yeah, enjoyed that. Never again. I will never do that again. No, <laughs> it kind of flipped you out a bit, didn't it, Brad? It did. Never again. <laughs> but it was fun, though. It's fun. It was. It was good. It's fun. And um, we uh, chatted with some. Tell them about the uh, post office. That girl in the post office was funny. Yeah, that was that was really random. We were Brad and I caught up for lunch, and we sent a few bits and pieces off to a couple of friends in the USA. And um, Brad, being the you know forthcoming guy he is, there's sort of some cute girl there at the post office, and he's like, "Hey, how you doing?" We, just, we start talking to her. She's from uh, the Netherlands or something, and sending off postcards. And Brad's like, "Hey, do you want a sticker for Zafo.com?" Oh, yeah, okay. Hey, you want a T-shirt for Zafo.com? And we're sort of having a chat. And she took the sticker and the T-shirt and stuff, so we're sort of just hanging around waiting for her to, to, to sign up and, and join. <laughs> <laughs> so it was pretty funny. But did she sign up? I, I, to be honest, I have not seen. I've got, I should probably have a look through the user accounts, but that's probably a bit creepy if I go and do yeah. that. So, it's, it so, yeah, it's a bit dodgy. So yeah. I, haven't, I haven't seen. But that's the best way to get your, get your product out, isn't it? Just hand stuff out to people. Yeah, it is exactly. Um, no, no harm in asking. You know, I asked, and I'm sure you wouldn't have asked. I don't think, would you? Sometimes I do. It depends. I mean, sometimes it's a bit awkward. Like, you know, that's cute young girl, and they're <laughs> kind of like, "What do you want?" I'm like, "I'm married. Go away." <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's good. It was good uh, catching up with you, mate, during the week. Yeah, it was great fun. That was good to see, bro. Good stuff. Um, Jody, hello. Hey, hi, Brad. How you doing? Well, you, were you amazed by that? What Andrew just said? I was absolutely. Somewhat horrified, but definitely amazed. <laughs> but, but for some some reason, Brad, I don't put that past you. You know, for Andrew, I imagine it's a little out of character. Yeah, well, you know, she's wearing a Zafo T-shirt. That's the best way to get the word out there. So, well, hopefully, she wears it well. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure she will. Um, she will, believe me. Yeah, I hope so. Um, who else have we got here? We got uh, Patrick from iPad Inside. Hey, mate. Hey there. Welcome to the show, and we'll be chatting to you, to you very shortly. Thanks for having me. Uh, have I missed anyone, Andrew? Nope, we've got, uh, and we've introduced Billy, have we? Yeah, we have Billy's on. Hey, Billy, welcome. Casey's on. Everyone's here except Steve. It's Steve's birthday today, so happy birthday to Steve. Happy birthday, Steve. Oh, happy birthday, Steve. Is that why he's not here? Yeah, that's right. He's probably not celebrating. That makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> we were going to sing to him, but we decided not to. 
Yeah, yeah probably. Do we have the rights to that? <laughs> uh, not sure. Um, all right, Andrew, jump into some uh, info before we get into the news. Do you want to mention uh, the geek? Yeah, we uh, had some contact earlier this week from the Beauty and the Geek production yep. company in Australia, and they are actually out there looking for new geeks for this season's Beauty and the Geek. So, um, really exciting. It's, it's actually a bit of fun show. My, my wife and I sit down sometimes and have a look at it. It's pretty cool. And yeah, so they're looking for some new geeks for this year. I think the entries sort of closed around the end of March, so you've got about six or seven weeks if you want to get in and uh, get involved, and I think they start filming sort of the end of April, yep. start of May, but um, Brad, have you got a website that we can hook them up to uh, there at all? You can go to beautyandthegeek.com.au. There you go. So um, if you're sitting back there behind your computer and you want to get your geek on on TV, why not have a look? Exactly. Um, also, please, uh, if you're listening to this podcast, when you finish listening, go to rate the podcast on iTunes and download it and share it with your friends. It's really cool you do that as well. We want to get high ratings on the podcast, on the iTunes. It'd be pretty good. Um, what else, Andrew, do you want to mention? Um, what about you, Casey? What have you been up to this week? Uh, recuperating. Recuperating. Okay. Recu- Busy week then. Uh, well, I had a... Uh Extremely uh, busy night out one night, and uh, I just a little bit too much uh, alcohol. Uh, uh, alcohol. Yeah, That's up to you. But um, <laughs> other than that, working on uh, uh, some video for Melissa B. And uh, okay. On top of that, uh, I had to design a couple wraps for uh, vehicle wraps. Cool. Get those out. Yeah, and we've seen a few of them. They're they're, they're really cool. Those wraps yeah. you're doing. And uh, Melissa B. If not, if you haven't heard of her, she's a a really good upcoming artist out of New York City. And I think it's just Melissa B. Dot Melissa B. Live. Dot com. We certainly recommend that you go and have a look. She's a friend of the show and um, support her. Support some of the people attached to the show. Oh yeah, definitely. We've we she's hooked us up with big time. So there was mm. lady Stephanie. I won't mention name. Looking at Stephanie, but I won't mention the whole name. But she mixed that. She got mixed up with the show, and uh, Melissa actually found a fill-in person. And by the day, name of DJ, um, what's his name? DJ Diamond. That's it, DJ Diamond. Yeah, mate, he's fantastic. He was Wasn't fantastic. he great? He was great. And that was on Tech Cluster. If you want to hear us interview DJ Diamond, um, head over and have a look at the Tech Cluster show during the week. It was a whole lot of fun. Definitely. And also, I want to mention this week uh, on Tech Cluster, uh, this w- episode ninety, we're going to be talking to uh, Tommy Walker. He's a re- re- he raps. Mm. You know who? Do you know who that is? Uh, Andrew, I wouldn't. Uh, he, yeah, it's a rapper. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a no. <laughs> um, what about you, Jay? Do you know who Tommy Walker is? Um, <laughs> no. Okay, you should check him out. Um, yeah, Tommy Walker's going to be on Tech Cluster. We're going to be chatting with him, and um, he's going to rap for us on the show. That's going to be pretty damn okay. cool. So we we'll might jump into um, Billy in a sec with some of the news updates and then uh, get right into Patrick Jordan and have a, a good chat to him. Sure, sure. Um, and, um, Billy, you got some news, mate? Yes, the tech headlines. Adobe Systems has released a patch for two Flash Player vulnerabilities that have been actively exploited that online to install malware. And while Flash versions of OS X and Windows are the only ones reported to be under attack, Thursday's unscheduled release is available for Linux and Android as well. Users of all affected operating systems should install the update as soon as possible. And in one foul swoop of Facebook glitch, Deep Six is the web. A Facebook sp- spokesman told All Things Digital, for a short period of time, there was a bug that redirected people logging in with Facebook from third-party sites to Facebook.com. The issue was quickly resolved, and log on- logging on with Facebook is now working as usual. Ouya has announced that the company's console will buck the trend of most gaming devices, which fr- infrequently update, and instead offer a new version of their hardware every year. Early sales data suggests that BlackBerry may have strong demand for the Z10, the first of two BlackBerry 10 handsets to be rolling out in the coming months. Unfortunately for us in the U.S., though, the Q10, the keyboard-equipped phone, won't hit the shores until May at the earliest. BlackBerry representatives explained that the Q10 will end up shipping in the U.S. 8 to 10 weeks after its touchscreen sibling, the Z10. In other mobile news, Sprint has announced its fourth quarter earnings for 2012, which include the sales of 2.2 million iPhones. A full 38% of those went to new customers. Overall, Sprint sold 6.6 million iPhones in 2012. And Apple's iTunes Store has reached a new milestone, passing 25 billion songs downloaded. 
The 25th billionth song Monkey Drums by Chase Butch was purchased by Philip Look from Germany. And French Apple reseller France System sent out a newsletter to its customers on the news that Apple will be halting sales of the Mac Pro on March 1, 2013 due to EU regulatory requirements. Apple declined to comment on the reseller's claims, merely pointing back to an earlier comment that Tim Cook made about new Mac Pros, co- excuse me, new Mac Pros coming later in 2013. And an Apple job posting points to Siri's imminent arrival to OS X. Apple's Siri UI engineering job listing specifically seeks programmers possessing familiarity with Linux, or excuse me, with Unix, specifically Mac OS X. And those are your tech headlines. Good news, Billy. Uh, that wasn't recorded, mate. I thought you were going to play the recorded one. No, I did the live. Jody said to do it live. I said, all right. I'll do it. Okay, that's cool. That's whatever works best for you. Good, great news stories. Uh, Patrick, do you have a view on them stories? Uh, yeah, I guess on a couple of them. Um, a number that caught my eye with the 25 billion uh, songs downloaded, it, there was a number given for the number of songs that are downloaded every day. And I think it was like 20, around 25 million or something songs per day. And the, the bit that caught my eye was the fact that the number of apps downloaded per day was about triple the number of songs. So that seemed pretty striking to me to show how far we've come with the app stores and things. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And you got a view on them stories, man? Um, I guess one of the things that strikes out to me is probably one of the smaller stories, and that's uh, Adobe in issuing an emergency flash update. It just sort of makes you think about all of these little things that we install onto our computers. Um, and obviously, Flash is probably one of those things that you install in the background. You don't even worry about it. Even people who don't like installing things, who like to use cloud-based, um, they tend to all install Flash. Yep. It just shows how vulnerable sometimes we are when we give our computer away to, to other organizations. Um, you know, it, it can be a bit scary when you look at that. I, I actually had a couple of computer issues during the week. And then I updated my flash later in the week without knowing anything about this. And I'm sort of um, cautious as to whether or not that had something to, to do with it. So it's, you know, you, you think about the number of things that you run on your computer, it just opens up uh, issues um, paramount. Yeah, good answer. Um, Jody? Any? Well, yeah, I mean, um, the situation with Facebook, it seems like um, Facebook keeps getting bigger and bigger and taking um, more and more information. Um, I don't know if any of you are involved with that graph search, but it seems like the kind of search that we used to do before, I was talking to a friend of mine today, and um, she said, oh, we're not connected on Facebook, and I've upgraded to the graph search. I go to the graph search. I cannot search for a person to add them. You actually have to go outside of Facebook and search for the person to find their Facebook page to add them. You can't do it through graph search. So, um, <laughs> I, I just, I wonder, you, to, you, you know. You, the, so, how about you, but the, you st- when you have graph search, does that take away the regular search then or whatever that's up there at the top? Yes. And so, okay. like, let's say, for example, you haven't talked to me for a while and you want to search and find my profile and say, hey, what's Jody up to? You can't hmm. do it. Wow. That's so, crazy. that's really weird because mm. that's something it's, I do a whole lot. If I haven't spoken to someone in a while, I'll, I'll jump on and type it in and have a look. The more, the more they, they make it what they think better, I think it's the worse that it is. And um, it's interesting, too, because um, you know one of the things that it'll do, if you want to search friends of friends, you can do that. And it's, I mean, talk about creepy and stalkerish. These are people that okay, I don't know. Okay, now that is a little creepy. Yeah. So, yep. But anyway... Um, Next Getting thing you know, Facebook will be giving out random T-shirts to people in post offices. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Um, what else, Casey? You have any views on them stories? Uh, I'm still looking into the uh, the Adobe thing because you know my main okay. thing is uh, all the software that I use is Adobe. Okay. So that was okay. the first I heard of it, and I'm looking into it. Yep. You know, the scary thing about that too, Casey, I'll be curious what you find out, find out because I know that there was a malware that was masquerading as a, an Adobe update. And I've every time I get that message, I avoid updating because I'm afraid I'm going to install malware. Now, is that malware just strictly, is it like uh, for every operating system or is it just Windows-based or is it Windows and? Uh, no, Mac. 
Mac based. Just Mac based, as far as I know. No, there were actually both both Windows and Mac. Wow. Was it? There's two of them out there. And this was probably six months or a year ago, wasn't it, Jody? Because I had exactly the yes. same thing. I saw this malware thing, and it was when you clicked on update. And I, exactly the same as you, I never, ever clicked on that update. I always did it manually for that exact reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I always hit remind me later, and then when I'm not in the middle of doing something, I'll, I'll pull it up and I'll see what the the update is actually updating. Because, like I said, with I, I have the Master Collection, so I've got everything. And it doesn't do just your Flash Player um, uh, update. It'll do the Photoshop update, uh, Illustrator update, uh, After Effects, and all that. So I kind of go through and see. But does that actually update the Flash Player yes. too? The the it, so it, it does. It, okay. The update, yeah. It, it has the Flash Player uh, okay. on it. Yeah. All right. Um, let's jump into the. Any? Do you want to mention anything else, Jody, before we jump into the guest, Patrick? Uh, the only other thing I would mention is that we're um, in the middle of a snowstorm, which is kind oh, of exciting. Oh, that's so cool. Go snowboarding. Um, and play, <laughs> and snow. No apocalypse. Snowmen and stuff. Can you <laughs> right? snow? I'll send pictures. I want some snow. Come visit. I dare to eat some snow. Um, so who's the guest today, Andrew? We have Patrick Jordan on the show today, and Patrick is from iPad Insight, so he can tell you everything and anything you need to know about I iPads. So looking forward to this guest being on today, because I'm a big iPad fan. So is Billy, and I'm sure Jody and Casey is as well, and, and Andrew. Jordan, what's up, buddy? Uh, uh, not a lot. I, I was uh, feeling some sympathy for um, me? Jody. I, I know what it feels like. I actually had to wear a long sleeve shirt last week here in Texas. Well, wow. here it's a bitter, bitter cold winter here. <laughs> All right, so uh, Patrick, tell us about what you do. Then the iPad Insight. What, what is it? Tell us about it. Uh, it's a blog that's all about the iPad. I do iPad app reviews, accessory reviews, lots of tips and tricks posts. Nice. Some stuff on rumors occasionally if I think the rumors are either worthwhile or just kind of funny. Okay, um, so tell us a rumor. Tell us a rumor. Tell us, tell us a, an exclusive rumor. Oh, man, I don't think I have any this week. <laughs> we can yeah. make one up. But it, that, that, that actually reads right into one of my questions. How do you handle the rumors? Because, like, there are a ton of them. And which ones are, like, which one's worth reporting about? Yeah, I, I mean, honestly, it's kind of just a case-by-case -case judgment call. Um, I guess my starting point is I try not to report on too many rumors because, as you say, they're so constant with the iPad and they're so constant with Apple that um, I think readers get pretty bored when every, you know, with sites that every single day um, are reporting, you know, seven different rumors and, and half of them are denying one that was posted two hours before. Um, so I, I guess that's my starting point is I, I don't try and overdo it with rumors, but, you know, when it's a really when they start to look more viable and when they're more interesting, you know, like something's looking like we really are going to see a new iPad released within a few months or something, then I'll, I'll cover those or I'll put my two cents in, in terms of if I think it's, you know, accurate or not. All right. So you kind of let them play ping pong and then when the dust settles, you report on it. Well, in my ideal world, it would work out that way. I think sometimes, you know, I, I make mistakes. I've I've dived in too early sometimes and said, "Oh, well, that one looks really credible," and then it turns out to be, you know, not so credible. Now, uh, Patrick, you're doing a, a podcast. You were doing a podcast with Christopher Rizzo. Um, is that you still going with that, or uh, he's still doing that? Total iPad, and I had a lot of fun doing that. Okay. Um, I just had a lot of. I was super slaughtered at that time with with work and things happening with, you know, life away from the internet. Um, and, uh, yeah, I just didn't have the time to keep doing it. I mean, we're good friends. I talk to him all the time on Google plus. Yep. There wasn't any sort of, you know, bad parting of the ways or anything. I just ran out of time for committing to that every week. Fair enough. Um, what sort of, what sort of things do you get sent to, to review? What's your favorite iPad mini case so far? Oh, wow. I have a few. Um, my favorite one, well, my, okay, my favorite iPad, I, this is a stupid term, but I call it my favorite iPad outfit 
is a smart cover and a really, really ultra thin jello skin wow. on the back because it, it allows the iPad. I'm using the iPad mini more than the big iPad. At the oh, moment. Same, same. I, I would never buy a bigger iPad. That's what I'm doing. Yeah, same. It's a, <laughs> good on your so, so is that your favorite iPad, the iPad mini? I think it is. You know, I still have the iPad 3. And like everyone, uh, it's love, you know, using the one with the retina display. But I pretty quickly found, I guess, within maybe 48 hours of getting the iPad mini that the just the incredible lightness of it and the form factor outweighed the retina display. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think my usage is probably around 70-30 in favor well, of the iPad mini. Good one. Um, good one. What about your iP- what about apps for the iPad? What's your favorite app so far you've been using this year? This year, new this year, um, a couple of them. Um, I uh, growing up, my my brother and I, uh, we played a lot of sports. But one of our favorite things to do is we spent a lot of time with war games, sort of strategy war games. I don't know, if we, I don't know if we were violent kids or what was wrong with us, but we liked these strategy war. So. Um, this year, uh, or no, tail end of last year, December, there's a game release called Battle of the Bulge uh, about the World War II battle between the Germans and the uh, Ameri- Germans versus the Americans and the British. And it's really the first proper strategy war game for the iPad. And it's superb. It's, it's really good. It's, it's, uh, if you've ever played Risk, yep. it's like Risk or Chess times a thousand. It's, it's really good on the strategic level it's not a lot of fancy graphics i mean it's a, it's a good enough looking map and game but it's it really all the emphasis is on the ai and the strategy element of it not on sort of flashy graphics and you can play it solo against the ai you can play it online against you know friends on game center uh and you can do pass and play but i, I don't know i don't think i've ever done pass and play with an ipad game in my life but that's available if you like it Okay, cool, cool. Um, Casey, do you have any questions for Patrick? No, I'm not. Uh, I'm not a real big iPad person. I'm sorry. I tried it out. I got okay. one. Um, I tried it out for probably about four months or so, and then just realized that uh, it just wasn't for me. Wow! Wow! Okay. Wow! Wow! Okay. What's, what's your mobile device of choice uh, then, Casey? The probably Android. Android. And- I got the, Android. Uh, yeah, I thought the so. Galaxy S3. Uh, that's a good phone. That's, that's a nice phone. I don't want to go. Don't want to go off topic at all. But that is a nice phone, though, Casey. I mean, it does everything I need. And for as much as you know, I'm I'm jumping around. Um, the the iPad is just it's actually just too bulky. I mean, I was actually thinking about the Galaxy Note two, and that's just that's too bulky for me also. I mean, this the Galaxy does everything that I need to do, and yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it. All right, um, Andrew, you All right. Um, Andrew, you don't have an iPad mini, but do you want an iPad mini? It's a really good question. I mean, my, my answer before, I guess, the last month or so has been no. But the more I think about it, the more I'm starting to think, you know, maybe there is a, a good opportunity there for a mini. I mean, when I, when I take my iPad, I've got this little sort of documents case yep. um, that I carry around. Yep. You know, carry my iPad around in. Yep. But I guess if you've got the mini, you probably don't even need to, to use that. So, yeah. It's it's a lot more on my radar in the last couple of months. I've got the iPad one and the iPad three, but um, I think the next one I get will probably be the mini before yeah. I go with a four or anything or a five yeah. or anything. Yeah, I've um the iPad four is already out, mate. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, so the iPad mini probably would be good for you. What size would you get? Ah, uh, wouldn't have a clue. Probably just a sixteen or a thirty-two. I don't, I don't need a, you know sixty-four gig, um, and one twenty-eight these days. I don't use that much space i tend to um just put what i want to watch or what i want to listen to i don't try and run my whole library on it which should be more than that anyway i love airplay uh patrick do you have an, uh, an apple tv do you use an apple tv uh yeah i really enjoy the apple tv actually yeah same i agree uh so does billy billy's got about how many do you have billy i have four apple tvs wow yeah that's that's what i want to work towards billy I, we've got one but i want like I have one actually that's in my, my I, I work from home, so it's in my home office, but I want right. to get one out in the living room and in our bedroom. Same. I want to get one in one in my room too as well and, and watch Apple TV 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, yeah, I've got an iTunes server with like uh, almost four terabytes of uh, movies and TV shows and music, 
And then I have four Apple TVs throughout the house, so we can just do video on demand. And it's awesome. Wow. It works great. That's, that's nice. crazy. Good on you, mate. That's nice. Good on you. Um, what else, Patrick, can you tell us about your website? What else can you tell us about? You, did you do any podcasting? Currently, apart from stuff like this, we're just kind of showing up as a guest once in a while. Um, no, I don't, I don't do a regular one. Okay. Um, I may, I may, I've done it a few times, and I always end up uh, finding that it's, it's really hard to, to fit the time in, you know, in a, in a regular slot. So I don't know. I might have another go sometime. Okay. Cool. Um, I, I put a link in the uh, – you were asking about favorite cases. Yeah. Um, I just chucked a link in the chat. Um, one of my favorite – I think <laughs> I get so many, honestly, between the ones I purchase and the ones that I get sent to me as review units. Um, I, I guess I have a few different favorites in different categories, but the, the link I put in there is honestly the most ridiculously beautiful iPad case you have ever, ever, ever laid eyes on. It's yeah, called, I posted that link to the Facebook page because that's awesome. Yeah, I, it's called the Celtic Hounds. Oh, wow. Uh, iPad mini cover. It's by a company called Oberon Design that make it here in America. It's all handcrafted. And it is, I mean, it's one of many of their designs that are just really like staggeringly gorgeous. Um, so, that, I mean, that's a definite favorite of food. It looks love the thing, just looks so cool. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. um, I have uh, one that I only got just recently called a Versa cover from a company called Moshi. Mm -hmm. And it's a really, really nice, very lightweight uh, solution. The, the fr it acts as a smart cover, so you can get, you know, take your smart cover off, and its cover will do the same. And it's about as light as the smart cover, maybe even a touch lighter. And then on the back, uh, this part is not you know, eminently attractive, but it works nicely. The back is just kind of a very uh, transparent, thin layer of, pla you know, thin plastic back cover, which, you know, as I say, it's not gorgeous looking, but it works effectively to add a little extra protection and stay really, really lightweight. Um, and then there, there's a bunch that are, you know, made in the USA and are kind of book style covers from companies like Portenzo and Avalon that are also gorgeous cases. I think the, the gist of it is if you're um, looking for an iPad mini case, you're spoiled for choice. There's lots of great choices right, out there. Definitely, definitely raise that. Uh, Jody, any questions to Patrick? Yes, um, Patrick, out of curiosity, I mean, you're watching what's happening with the iPads. And it seems like when we went to the iPad 4, the iPad mini was almost like a step backwards because it doesn't have the retinal display. What do you see as the next generation? You know, what kinds of things do you think that Apple is, is going to be um, a focus on the camera? Is it going to be better graphics, faster processor? What do, what do you see as the big changes in the next generation? Well, I think the two, the two obvious ones this year will hopefully be that the standard iPad is going to borrow from the iPad mini. It's going to probably adopt the back cover, the slate back cover from the iPad mini. And it's almost certainly and hopefully going to be considerably lighter and thinner, which I think a lot of standard iPad owners will you know, welcome with open arms. And then the iPad mini, the obvious move uh, is going to be to give it a retina display. I think if the iPad mini has a retina display, it'd be it'd be hard to make an argument it's not the perfect device because um, it's an it's a really really great device without the retina display so if they add the retina display this year um th that's just going to be a really really killer device you know and it's interesting too because you think about it the phone is getting bigger and the ipad's getting smaller where do you see is there going to be a merge or do you still see these as being two distinct uh different devices uh, the the latter, I, I do think they're going to stay as two different devices. Um, it, it almost feels to me, and, and I've seen some people arguing for this in, in places like Google Plus. It almost feels to me like, you know, every time when the iPad first come, came out, uh, initially a lot of people said, "Well, there's no need." You know, it's in, it's like in between a laptop and an iPhone, and there's really no room for that. And then the iPad's been a massive hit. Um, and now we see all these, you know, the, the big smartphones that are getting, you know, it seems like more massive all the time. And some of them are now called phablets. 
Um, so I, I think I almost, I definitely don't think they're going to merge like the iPhone and the iPad. And I wouldn't be terribly surprised if Apple decides to make a, a, an in-between device between them, it, you know, gets into the phablet sort of area. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Um, what else do you do, Patrick? Besides you do bog, you do reviews and stuff and that sort of thing. What else do you do? Uh, I run, um, I run, well, I used to be editor in chief at iSource.com as well, which covers everything Apple. I only just left there at the end of last year. Okay. Um, I also run, a, you know, what I call a kind of little baby hobby site, which is called iPad and iPhone art. Okay. Um, just because uh, I, I couldn't draw my way out of a paper bag or paint my way out of a paper bag, but I'm a big admirer of um, art that gets created on iPads and iPhones. And it's, if, if you've never seen it, it's unbelievable the uh, artwork that gets done on iPads. Um, just people, you know, some of them use styluses, but more often than not, it's people, you know, literally with their fingers painting um, and just absolutely stunning artwork. Uh, there's a guy called Jorge Colombo who has been on, has had his uh, iPhone and iPad paintings featured on the cover of the New Yorker magazine several times over, just as one example. Um, so th there's a lot of traditional artists who have uh, moved over to painting on the iPad, and then there's a lot of people who have, you know, begun as digital artists and, and do great things. So, uh, you know, that site doesn't get a whole bunch of traffic, but it, it's just kind of fun. I, I like doing that one. What's the best – I've got a question for you, Patrick. What is the best TV app you've seen so far, like, you know, TV apps like ZBox and GetGlue? Have you seen any of them sort of cool apps you, rec you want to recommend? Uh, I like GetGlue, and I like uh, – what's it called? There's one that starts with the word next. Um, next Guide? Next. Uh, that might be it. Uh, me. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, next guy. Yeah, you're right. I like that one too. That's a good app, yeah. Nice one. What about you, Billy? Have you got any cool TV apps for the iPad? What would you recommend? Um, I like the Into Now because I get to do this little screenshot stuff where you get to label it. Okay. Um, but for the most part, I generally have to stay away from the social apps because I'm DVRing my shows. And if I go into the social apps, they're like talk about spoilers and stuff. So. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, cool, fair enough. But TV's got to fix this. <laughs> yeah. What about you, Jody? Do you, what, do you use Zbox and them, any of them sort of apps? Well, no, but I, I have Netflix. I like watching um, Netflix episodes on my iPad, and I've got the regular size one with the retinal display. That's pretty cool. Um, I also have, um, you know, the regular uh, broadcast stations like ABC. So if I miss one of the shows that's on television, I can catch up on the episodes like of Grey's Anatomy or something like that. And... Yep. Um, yeah, and honestly, I love the retinal display. So that's that's why I'm still kind of like, you know, I understand you guys and your your love of the mini, but I just still don't get it. So oh, I think we need to send you one, Jody. Um, hey, Jody, have you seen the new <laughs> show on Netflix? What's that? Have you seen the new show on Netflix? That one that just made for the Netflix? That one, House of Cards. That's it, House, House of, of Cards. Cards. I want to see that. You know what? Um, you know, I, that's on my list to do. Um, people it who I know awesome. who watched it thought thought it's, it's good. Really it's really, really good. Is it? It's, it's it superb. Is. Awesome. Oh, okay. Hey, hey, Patrick, I've got the Logitech Ultra Thin keyboard case, which which I, I had a look at about 10 different keyboard cases, and for me that one stood out uh, you know, by a country mile. But the big problem I have with it is when you actually get the iPad, you have to put it into like this little wedge, this groove in the keyboard case itself. So it yep. means that when you actually try and – transport it it's it's got the magnet and it clips in together really nicely but your actual ipad doesn't have um any case on the back of it so it sort of gets scratched and you feel like it's getting damaged is there anything that's thin enough as a case where you can actually still plug it into that groove in the keyboard case without it um because every every you know shell back i've seen are thick and they've got that little corner and it stuffs up the magnet and it also means it doesn't quite go in properly to the groove in the keyboard case I, I I don't know. I don't think you'll find a, a a case that that will fit because of the reasons you just mentioned. I do think that depending on what level of protection you want, if you just want minimal protection from scratches mm -hmm. and things of that nature, then try a gel skin or a skin from uh, Zag. Um, they are really really ultra thin, and, and they'll they'll definitely still fit for for um, uses like that. Okay, I'll give that a go. And just my other question, uh, Patrick, is 
I, obviously, Apple have gone down the path of everything that goes on the iPad has to come through iTunes effectively, whereas, uh, you know, Android and these sorts of things, you, you've got a lot more flexibility, USB sticks um, and so forth. My parents both have iPads and both of them have problems trying to run everything through iTunes and they think it's difficult and they're not quite sure. Is this something that you've recognized before? You've got young kids, do they totally pick up on iTunes and things like that or do you think that Apple have gone down a, a poor path there with a really great um, you know, user experience product and then put software next to it that's not as easy to use? <laughs> well, um, yeah, I mean, that's like a great, that's, that's, that's a, the, the big philosophical debate or one of the philosophical debates between the platforms. Um, I, I think there are always, they may be considered clumsy, but there are always ways around, you know, the walled garden effect of iOS. I mean, my best advice uh, when I'm helping a friend or an acquaintance set up a new iPad and, and they're kind of trying to get to grips with, you know, you can't really have access completely to the file system. I mean, my first bit of advice is is get Dropbox or, or one of its competitors that's a really good uh, cloud sync and cloud, you know, file storage service and I think Dropbox is superb. Um, I still think it kicks iCloud's ass, you know, even today. And iCloud's not is improving and it's not terrible, but Dropbox is still much better. Okay. Good. I don't actually. know if I answered everything you were asking there. Yeah, you, you sort of did. I mean, it's uh, I'm, I'm kind of I've I've got an app on my iPad that I actually use a whole lot called. Uh, AV Player HD, and what that does is it just plays any kind of video format, but the big advantage is you don't need to push through iTunes to do it all. You just jump into iTunes, click on the app, and then you can drag files in and out. So it makes life a whole lot easier without having to use sort of iTunes and import infant stuff. And, you know, if you've got a TV show or something and iTunes is trying to say whether or not it's legitimate, you don't have to worry about any of those sorts of things. And it's just a whole lot easier to use. And I, I guess I probably need to go and try and find a music player as well that you can just sort of plug in, which does exactly the same thing. Because, you know, I've got and iTunes running on this computer, that computer, and the one upstairs, and, and so forth. And it's pretty difficult sometimes to manage that, you know, this particular to all of them at the same time, and they've got the same libraries, and it just becomes too too difficult. You need, you need an Apple TV, Andrew. That's what you need, mate, so you can airplay all your music and stuff to your speaking and stuff. True, but you still it still doesn't fix if you're out and about. I, I travel a fair bit. We so. use uh, Get Spotify. Yeah, I was just going to say Spotify or, or yeah, RDO, yeah. one of the streaming yeah. apps. Yeah, Spotify or RDO or uh, Mog. Um, you know, they're, they're a good service to use, like 10 bucks a month, which is pretty good. Yeah, true. Uh, true. But then what about all, all – I mean, I've, I'm still a little bit old school in that I've got, you know, gigabytes of all of this music oh, what, what that I've the, collected you, over the time. <laughs> whatever, whatever music you can get, you can get on Spotify these days. Do you yeah, have true. anything like uh, Google Music there? No, we can't use it here. Or, can't you can't use that there yet? No, no. That's we, we just got Spotify. Yeah. Um, but you can also actually add local files, Andrew, from the computer onto Spotify, the uh, program, and then okay. when it's all added, and then okay. you go into the app on the iPhone, you can play all your local files there. Okay. Did not know that. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, Jody, what's your view on that? Um, Spotify? Yeah. Um. I think Spotify is great, but I, I understand what you're saying, Andrew, with, with regard to um, having songs that you already collected and wanting to, to listen to them. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. I, I understand that as well. Yeah, definitely. I'd, I'd, uh, so, yeah. Well, that's a great answer, Jody. Um, Casey, do you have a view on that? Um, I tried Spotify out. I wasn't real impressed with it. But then again, when I'm out and about, I really don't listen to a whole lot of music. Um, same. I'll uh, if I'm doing something and I'm, it's at a point where I can actually listen to something, I've got uh, I've I've got about ten gig of audiobooks. Um, wow. Ranging right. from fiction nice. to science fiction to technical, that I'll sit there and I'll listen to. All right. Well, Patrick, thanks for being on, mate. Uh, plug your website and your Twitter and that sort of stuff. And um, yeah, what else do you want to mention? Anybody? Hi. Uh, no, I'm good. Thanks. Thanks very much for having me. It was All fun. Right. Where can they find you on Twitter and stuff, man? And then the website. Plug the website. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, the website is iPadInsight.com. Insight is I N S I G H T. Yep. And uh, on Twitter, I'm at iPadInsight blog. Good one. 
Go follow him. Um, I'm at Brad Oz in a tech webcast. Andrew, where you can... Yep, you can grab me, zafer.com forward slash at Andrew or facebook.com forward slash Ari from Oz, Twitter forward slash Ari from Oz. Okay, and also I want to mention uh, Modern Day Computers also got Nat on tech webcast too. He's, he's paying uh, five bucks a month, so that's good. Um, good on you, Brian Boer. Well, money spent. Uh, Casey? Uh, you can get a hold of me at... Uh my website, uh, Evolution Graphics, it's evolutiongfx.com, um, or Twitter, CAG101.com, yep. um, or Facebook, uh, Casey Grzelik, and if you can figure out how to spell my name, I might give you something. <laughs> and, I might, and I might add, actually, Casey did the intro for um, Tech Webcast, and he's a really he talented did. graphics designer, so if you're looking for anybody... We definitely recommend you get down there and have a chat with Casey. I agree. Send him an email. Make sure you pay the guy. Um, also, as I want to mention, Anywhere Computers is now a sponsor of Tech Webcast, Andrew. Yes, that's right. So uh, we've got Anywhere Computers, and we'll be doing a number of reviews and things for them for different equipment and technologies that they bring our way. So yep, uh, we're really looking forward to that. So Anywhere Computers, they're in uh, Melbourne, yes, that's Australia. Right. So if you are in and around, we definitely recommend you head down there and have a look at what they're up to. Yep. Anywherecomputers.com.au is the website. You can also buy stuff on, off there as well. And uh, yeah, check it out. Uh, also, Cameron's going to be on the show um, in a couple of months to come on and talk about the website and that sort of good stuff. So. Uh, um, it's going to be good to talk to him as well. Um, Jody, have we asked you your Twitter username yet? Uh, not yet. Um, you can okay. find me on Twitter as Sunswept. Um, you can find me online at webmarcom.net. Yep. Um, one of the cool things, Brad, I don't think I, I mentioned to you, I'm not sure if you picked it up, but um, Go ahead. you know, HubSpot mentioned their top 39 blogs to follow, and um, I was really honored to be among them. So, just oh, wow. To, Good on you. Yeah. Number, what number yeah. one? Congratulations. That's cool. Yeah, yeah it's pretty pretty exciting. It's, it, with stuff like uh, Guy Kawasaki and Marketing Sherpas and SEO Moz and webmarcom.net was, was one of the 39. So, so you're um, you number 39, were you? Well, I, it was alphabetical, so yeah. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> that, that's, good, w? That. <clears throat> that's, yeah. that's still good. Um, and also, Andrew, you'll be on a show next week, mate, to talk about Zafo. Yeah, I will actually. Um, really looking forward to that. That's the uh, Sean Moffat radio show, and um, I'll be on there having a bit of a chat uh, about Zafo. And he's uh, out of New York and has a radio show. And yep. um, yeah, really looking forward to that. So if you Google Sean Moffat dot uh, com, you'll you'll sort of find him, and you know, feel free to jump in and have a listen. And uh, please plug Tech Webcast. Hint, hint. Yeah, sure will. You can uh, absolutely. Uh, all right. Anything mention any more, Andrew? Before we go, any other, other news? Not really, Brad. I think that's uh, just about it. Uh, so check out, uh, get, what's that? What's that? Uh, Geek? Beauty and the, yeah, Beauty and the Geek. So um, just jumping back to where we were before, if you are in Australia and you want to be a contestant on Beauty and the Geek, they've got their feelers out at the moment. So we'd certainly recommend you get over to beautyandthegeek.com.au or Google them and yep. um, register and just say that we have sent you across. Yep, and just uh, mention Andrew or myself's name, Brad or Andrew, and then uh, we're also going to be... Um, having them on as well soon as well yeah looking forward to it can't wait all right patrick thanks for being on thanks patrick for being on you're a legend casey thanks mate for doing the video <laughs> hopefully you were you were recording it oh, thank man. you brad sorry my, my mic was muted and i couldn't say thank you fast enough sorry <laughs> <laughs> um yeah thanks casey for being on mate you're a legend thanks for taking over steve's job today that's all right hopefully everything went through all right and uh i can it's recording uh, be uh, invited back to do it again another time. Definitely, definitely, definitely. You just upload this to uh, Bloop TV and stuff, and you'll be all set to go, ready to go. And just get, 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 get it was into uh, YouTube and TiVo, so it'll be on TiVo soon. Um, yep. Okay, thanks, guys. Thanks, Jody. Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Brad. Hi. I posted those links to the Facebook page. Bill, oh, yeah, Eric thanks, and Billy. Myself, as we bring you the latest, most up to date, important tech news that affects you from Australia and the world. Weekly podcast available each Friday through iTunes. Watch the live stream recording of the show at live.thesecrethub.com each Thursday night, 7 30 p.m. or GMT plus 10. Call in live via Skype or chat in our lounge. However, you get us, just make sure you do. Listen or visit our website for more information www.ozzytechhead.com.au. Aussie Tech Heads, Australia's longest running tech. Tech News Podcast.
Well, that's it for Tech Webcast this week. Thank you for tuning in. We hope you enjoyed having your mind expanded. Tune in next week for more Tech Talk with Brad, Jason, and whatever crazy guests they've managed to rope in. Don't forget to get the Tech Webcast app from iTunes. Follow us on Twitter at Tech Webcast. And of course, check us out on Facebook too. Until next time, may the tech be with you. Peace.